Today we begin to explore the fluid system of the body in the form of the blood and the lymph. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Minky. This is Minky Wellness. And the blood and the lymph are to the two basic fluid systems that we have inside of our tissues or inside of our body. And so let's talk about those a little bit. And then we're going to do a little bit of um, breathing and making that connection, which if you've been following us so far through the respiratory system, this won't be at all foreign to you. Um, and, uh, and then we'll talk about, uh, we'll, I'll kind of give you an overview of what we're doing for the month and see where we're headed, okay? So let's begin with talking about what these two systems are, the blood and the lymph. The blood has been called a liquid tissue, uh, so it, it's, it's a tissue, it's very, it's very organized. Uh, it seems like it would just be this kind of random soup of, of material, but it's not. Um, it is, uh, it's got lots of cells inside of it, that, uh, a lot of different types of cells that run around. It, the, the constitution of the, of the blood is very particular. Uh, the pH is maintained very carefully. Uh, it, the, whole, the, whole, the whole tissue has very particular um, uh, purpose and uh, mainly to, to deliver um, thing, material through the, through the bloodstream to the tissue. So we, we're delivering um, the hormones from the brain to the organs or from the you know adrenals to the organs any kind of hormones that are released in the bloodstream are delivered uh, and so that's one one aspect of delivering things from point A to point B of course we have to deliver nutrients and oxygen from the lungs out to the tissues nutrients from the digestive system out to the tissues uh, and then we've got to get rid of the the uh, waste material carbon dioxide uh, in particular as it comes uh, out of the tissues and back out in the lungs and that's all delivered through carbon dioxide it's dissolved into the water through in the form of carbonic acid and, and it's uh, the basic um, the, the system the buffer system in, in the blood so we've got a lot of things going on in the blood that's not just a, a, a random series of fluids so you know as we kind of get to know this a little bit we'll, we'll be we'll be getting a little bit more and breathing into and, and discussing and kind of paying attention to these uh, different elements that are in the blood but for the most part um, right now we're just going to talk about it as a fluid based system that is traveling inside the tubes uh, of the the cardiovascular system so the cardiovascular system and the circulatory system are really kind of two different things the circulatory system I'm referring to is really the the blood and the lymph the actual material the actual uh, liquid in there whereas the cardiovascular system is the heart and the tubes right so cardiovascular and all the vessels right so the vessels are what are what the blood moves through but we're not going to worry too much in this in this month about the heart and the and the vessels that will come later we'll do another another uh, month on that but uh, but this time we're just talking about the fluid so in the the blood system we've got the fluid is moving through the, these tubes okay and so it goes uh, very much like the lungs where we went from you know larger tubes down into smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller tubes until we're tiny tiny little tubes same thing happens in the in the vascular system with the blood is the tubes go branch and the branch and the branch and the branch and the branch and they get smaller and smaller and smaller until they're just tiny little itty bitty capillary beds uh, and this is where it goes from you know we kind of if you've ever seen those pictures of the the blue uh, uh, the red and the blue blood all coming together in this little capillary bed well that cap the, the blood transfers through and once it gets down to that that end point the most thin uh, uh, area of the blood vessel then uh, the capillary beds, then the, the material diffuses out, oxygen diffuses out, carbon dioxide diffuses in, and then we've got that all returning. And so we've got a closed, a quote unquote closed system. It's not really closed, obviously, because fluid is moving out of that, and we can look at the, inter and that's where the interaction between the, the uh, blood and the lymph, okay, right there at the point where we have these capillary beds, the vessel walls are so thin, they're only one cell thick, that they can actually separate and allow fluid to flow out. The, one of the, there are a lot of signals that, that can be given in the body, for, but one of those is inflammation. And so the inflammatory signals uh, allow the fluid, they, they separate, it, it causes the cells to separate apart. And, it, and that fluid uh, runs out of, of the vessels and into the tissue, and we would think of that as swelling. So if you have chronic low-grade inflammation, then you have more 
of your fluid, the, the blood fluid, is move, plasma is moving out into the, the tissues and becomes lymph. And so you have a, a, you know, more swelling, retaining more water, and that kind of thing. So one of the things that can happen when someone starts to get healthier and their inflammation system gets more, more regulated is that they can lose a lot of weight and they can feel great because what's happening here is that um, my inf the inflammation level might come down and, um, and of course that helps, happens when you start clearing toxins and things like that. Um, and so then the, the, without that chronic inflammation level, the, the whole system tightens up a little bit and we actually end up with less fluid dumping out into the tissue. Okay, so that's just a little explanation of how the system is working. There's a very careful connection or, or a controlled connection between the fluid in the blood and then the fluid in the lymph. So what's the lymph? The lymph is the fluid that collects in the tissue and that actually collects in, in not so organized, uh, I mean, it's, it is an organized system, but it's not so clearly defined when these, in ducts and it has some ducts and shunts and, and it has more little rivulets and then these come into ducts and they finally do form into, into you know, very clear lymphatic ducts. And these ducts are what draw out the fluid from the tissue to drain that and they go into and they get filtered by lymph nodes and we'll, we'll, do, we'll be talking a lot more about the lymph and the lymph nodes and, uh, and then the main lymph node which is the spleen. So all that comes together. And then, and then all of the blood is constantly getting filtered through the kidneys and through the liver uh, and so we might touch a little bit on those as well as we go through this, okay? So, but basically we are still talking about a water-based system, but one of the most amazing things about the blood and the lymph are both is that they carry both water and fat, uh, you know, aqueous and, and fat solutions. So it, this is really an amazing system to be able to transport fat through the bloodstream and through the lymph and to be able to transport, you know, within a, a liquid-based system. So it's it's really uh, uh, an amazing thing, and we'll we'll like I said, we'll make some some more inroads and in understanding to, of that. So that's kind of an overview of what the tissue looks like, or what what we're you know dealing with as as and the connection between the two. And the, and these are all regulated issues. If we have uh, too much salt, uh, you know, we can we can end up. Um, you know, we eat too much salt, we and, and talk about getting extra fluid in the tissue, fluid retention that hurts the kidneys and the fluid builds up and then I get swelling from that or I get high blood pressure, uh, you know, things like that. But these are these connections, it all has to do with water and regulation of water and, uh, and so this is kind of what we're starting to connect to this month. Um, and and feel how the what the water system is doing in our bodies. I mean, we will do a whole a whole system on the excretory system. So we'll do some stuff on kidneys, um, and and of course we'll do, we're going to do a whole chunk on on the liver. But but basically, this is all about the, you know when we talk about blood and lymph, it's all about this fluid and fluid balance and how much you know how much fluid I'm getting if I'm getting not enough. Okay, so what happens if I get not enough fluid in particular? Well, then the blood actually starts to get thick and it doesn't run very well. And then of course I'm feeling tired and uh, or, and achy and things like that because the, my tissues aren't getting washed out and I end up with yesterday's uh, junk still hanging around. And so even my hormones aren't getting cleared because yesterday's hormones are still hanging around because they haven't had enough flushing out of the tissue. And so we get this, this uh, a big problem when the when we don't get enough water and just cover. So I'm back to reminding you, especially this month, please, please, please drink your morning water, but not just your morning water. Really be diligent this time. I know you've been doing your morning water. That's great. Now this time we're going to be really super diligent about getting the the water also at the at the rest you know for the rest of the day. Uh, so get your morning water and your midday water and your afternoon water and your evening water. Uh, and uh, and of course, if you're doing 20 ounces each time there, then you've got your 80 ounces, and you're you're going to be pretty close to where you need to be. Some people might need a little bit more than that, and and if we're in the mid process of cleansing, you might need a little bit more of that. So as we get into this, uh, we're going to be using our therapeutic breath system, and we're going to talk you know talk about cleansing breath, and and I don't know if you've experienced a little bit of that already, but it can be really pretty potent, so we need to be ready with that. And we'll so we'll talk about. Um, as we go in, I think we've already, we've already posted the supplements for the month and I'll, I, will, I will talk about them. Uh, we already talked about uh, what to order and why, but we'll talk more specifically about how to use them, how we're going to implement them in our system. We're going to be doing some exercises. <gasps> oh no, oh my gosh. Um, we're going to do a few little exercises on how to pump the lymph. We're going to do deep breathing to pump the lymph. 
Um, and, uh, and so we've got a lot of, of things to cover in this month. So it's going to be a fun and, and a good month. But let's just do a little bit of breathing. I'm going to keep this, try to keep this short. Um, and we're going to make that connection. We've done this already. We've made that connection to the blood from the lungs. Um, but we're going to breathe in as we breathe in and take that awareness into the, the, into the lungs. And then from the lungs out to the blood, so that blood is, is saturating all the way through the lung tissue. Okay, and so we feel that connection to the fluid. Okay, and it's this fluid connection. And, and I go out and I can feel the fluid and, and the movement. Uh, and, and that's really an important part of what we're going to be doing. Because once you can, if you can feel the blood and you can get using your mind to get into the blood, you can go all over the body and we're going to do that tomorrow so um but this this idea of connecting to the fluid let me make one more comment about this and uh and that is that the fluid water has an amazing capability of picking up the energies around it okay and i don't know if you're familiar with um excuse me the um Japanese researcher who did the, the research on, on uh, snowflakes and, and he, he did the freezing of, of water and, and then he played music to the water and showed that it froze, the snowflakes froze differently if, depending on what kind of music he played. And so we're talking about, and this is actually the basis of homeopathy, if you're not familiar with homeopathy, that homeopathy really is the water retains the memory of the substance that it was in. So when they dilute it out, dilute it out, dilute it out, and you have almost nothing left of the substance, but all that's left is the energetic imprint in the water. Water has this amazing capability of being imprinted and, and having a memory. And so as we get in touch with our water in our body, and we're asking our, our, you know, we're bringing light and healing and we're inviting God's love into the water in our body. It is literally going to pick that up. And uh, likewise, if we, if we speak ill of ourselves and we, we essentially we are focusing uh, bad things into our, into our body and into our water, into the water in our tissue, then our tissue is going to be picking up that grunge and we're going to end up having that, feeling that effect. So we have an opportunity consciously to bless, participate, uh, breathe into, do self-energy work, however you want to think of it, but breathing that, bringing that into the fluid in the body and that, that fluid will, the water of the body, will pick up the, that message and send it and all the way through. So we want to be careful about what kind of message we're sending to our body, but then that means we, we're so, we, we're, it's so powerful because now we can, we can engage consciously, which is you know, a big thing with me about being conscious, um, we can engage consciously in sending uh, wonderful and healing and, and beautiful things into the water and into the fluid. So even if I just did that one time, and, and here we are, uh, you know, getting getting advanced breathing, but, you know, I can breathe into the water of my whole body, and I'm going to bless the water in my body, uh, and I can invite the, uh, God's love to vibrate in there. Um, I mean, you know, from a Christian perspective, I, you know, the bathe in the blood of Jesus. I know if, if you're not Christian, that sounds really weird. Um, but um, to invite the, the, the kind of love that Jesus offered to the world uh, as, a, as a walking human being, uh, divine uh, element in the world. And, and so to invite that kind of, of presence uh, into our, our lives, and into our bodies, in a physical, in a very real and physical way, uh, you know, and if, as a Catholic, that is very, very uh, uh, augmented in the Eucharist. So again, I'm not trying to get religious. I'm sharing with you what the perspective that I come from uh, as a practicing Catholic. So what I'm saying is all this, this uh, uh, discussion at some level, wherever you're at in the in in your spiritual belief, you can invite any invitation you make to invite a blessing or uh, or goodness or or health or healing into the water of your body, it will pick that up. The science proves this. Uh, it will pick that up. It will be shaped and influenced by what you are asking to come into your body. So this is an opportunity for us to really tap into uh, some of the most amazing healing potential that we have through consciousness and through blessings and through music and through the vibrations that are around us and to participate. And so what I always like to do is breathe in good vibrations and let the other bad vibrations go, right? So breathe in only good vibrations, wash out the bad vibrations and there we go. A single breath meditation, 
and I'm good to go. You can do that. I call it a, a one breath meditation. There's a lot of ways to do one breath meditation. So I, I, I said I was going to be short, but I'm not. Here I am at the end of 15 minutes. So hope this has been useful. We're going to have a great month. Uh, keep up the good work. Keep your, keep your, uh, your water and happy wellness.